Welcome back, back to another video journal. This is video journal for, um, episode 117. And I skipped last week, if you noticed. Nobody noticed, I don't think. So, whatever. <laughs> but I skipped last week because life has been crazy for me lately. And it's really, well, let's start off with this is my video journal where I talk about everything that goes down in my musical and artistic journey in the last week and this particular episode will be the last two weeks so this may be a really long one we'll see if you stick around for the whole thing um but we'll get into it but the but like i was saying life has been crazy um and so that's why i missed last week and i'm gonna try to tell you a little bit about why life has been crazy yeah we'll get into it a little bit shall we but let's start off with some fun stuff um, and then we'll talk about the kind of more serious stuff, I guess. But for starters, the fun stuff is the jam of the week, right? What are you jamming on? What are you listening to? I want to know. I want to know what you're jamming on. So you got to tell me. Post it in the comments, either on Facebook or right here on YouTube. Post it in the comments of this video. Let me know what you're jamming to. What I've been jamming to, there's three jams this week for me. Um, two local bands and one bigger band um the two local bands so first release some new music that i think's excellent i want to tell you about let you know about is um my uh beatrix sky released another album called rockstar and the jam in particular is the first song off that um album called pretty things i like that one a lot and well and then so the this Beatrix Sky is that's one jam, and the second jam of the local bands is Wiscon released some music, and um, their song is called "Wake Up" that I'm really jamming on. That's just a single with like a B side essentially. Um, I like the "Wake Up" the best out of that. These two bands, even though they're they sound very different, I think they bring a very um, similar sentiment to their ideas, and what that is is for me, they're both have a punk ethic and how i am am equating that is beatrix sky music is like electronic kind of stuff it's kind of a i don't know how she describes it but uh has electronic element it's kind of has this atmospheric element to it however the songs are super short and to the point and they get it they just hit it and quit it kind of and that is a very punk mentality when in songwriting and so that's where I'm equating these two things even though the styles are totally different the getting to the point of the song for both these bands is like there and and Wiscon is kind of more traditional punk sounding with I'd say some surf rock in there some soul for sure um, has a definitely definitely throwing a lot of different genres to mixing a lot of different genres together which is why I like them a lot because it's not just one thing they're um kind of they have a unique sound which is really awesome so check both these bands out from seattle area northwest i should say um but they're awesome check those things out and my third jam which i just downloaded yesterday um i finally downloaded the new tegan and sarah album and the song u-turn is blowing my mind i love it so much i've just been listening to it solid so i'll put um some kind of links or something definitely to the Beatrix guy Wisconsin in the description of this video Tegan and Sarah don't need my help they are doing fine without my help so you can find that song if you want so that's the some of the fun stuff some of the other fun stuff is the last couple weeks I've taken lots of pictures and and videos from my phone on the playlist on this YouTube channel there's a playlist called video from my phone and some of those bands that I've, I've gotten photo pictures of is um over the last two weeks is clearly beloved the local strangers tobias the owl the, the banner days goldie wilson and beatrix sky all have um photo um sets in the word on the street facebook page so go check that out and then also all of those bands except goldie wilson have a video for my phone um song full song on this youtube page so check that out you know get to know your your local bands i missed goldie wilson because i got to the show late and um they were the first band and i usually just pull my phone out at some random point and start recording one complete song and i was like okay i'm ready to do it and it, they it was their last it was like i don't know i was 
discovered it was their last song like before I figured out I was gonna do it. So I missed my chance, and I was kind of bummed about that. But um, great band, all great bands. So that's some fun stuff. Um, let's see. We're on the street had two episodes, obviously, of the last two weeks. So we're on the street is the podcast. Um, WOTSpodcast.com. I had Wes Engelbach on the podcast, and we talked about Real Dime Music. He's helping Real Dime Music out, and that was the focus of the conversation. But he also helps out other musicians. He's kind of like a label ish, record label kind of support, producer, promoter type person for music in the scene. And we just kind of had a casual conversation about ideas in the scene and things like that. And I don't really remember a lot. I didn't write down anything. I didn't write down anything. This is. See the blue writing right there? That's what I wrote down two weeks ago about stuff, and I haven't been on my game of writing things down. But I did listen back to them. Um, the uh, episode 93 with the ladies from the Macefield Music Festival were on 93. And again, great conversation about Macefield. Um, pretty surface-oriented conversation. We didn't really go under the surface that much about what it means to be part of the scene. But they're... Um, well, we dabbled in some ideas, but it wasn't. It was a short one. It's really hard to get below the surface when the conversations. It was only thirty minutes long, and when when a conversation is only thirty minutes long, it it just tends to bounce along the surface of different ideas. And I've noticed in general around the forty forty five minute mark of a conversation with when I have people over here, that's when it starts to really get juicy <laughs> get good Rob and we didn't even have 40 minutes to talk so different creature I definitely like it better when it's longer I understand there's some advantages to it being shorter but what I'm going for is very much like what it really means and talking about it and having a discourse about what it means to be a part of this scene the Seattle music scene and um and it's hard to do that when you don't when you, you need to set up the get to know you part of a podcast and then you talk about ideas and then you go what do those ideas mean what does it mean to be things and and we never quite got to that point so hopefully maybe i'll have them on again and we can talk because there's obviously more that they're involved with and they can they can talk about i did there was one moment where i mentioned um you know communicating with bands and their their response was that's a loaded topic and it's like great what's loaded about it you know, we didn't really, because I know what it's like for me to communicate with bands, and it's really basically hard to, um, a lot of times, because of there's like a, tends to be, for various reasons, uh, uh, a, a lack of urgency is the biggest thing that I've noticed. A lack of urgency with when you're trying to set up a show, when you're trying to communicate through email, it's like it takes a lot longer than I believe it should on average for a band to get back to you with confirmation or not, you know, usually. And then there's, this plays into the potential Seattle freeze aspect of things. It's like, it's become pretty common in general. And I don't know if this is more than just in Seattle, but it's been pretty common, you know, no response means no. So instead of saying, no, I'm not interested, you just don't respond. And you just kind of, which is very frustrating for me because it's, it doesn't leave. I give it like three days usually. That's my line. If, if somebody doesn't get back to me within three days, I'm like, okay, they mean no. So I move on. But it's like, it helps a lot if there's an actual communication chain saying, no, not interested. Thanks for the offer or whatever it may be. So that's some ideas. And I'm wondering, I'm, it's pretty, I'm going to assume that that's kind of part of the loadedness of communicating with bands that we, that was came up. Um, what else? What else? So one of the biggest things I... So this this next portion, I guess we'll just get into some of uh, what's been... the Why I missed this last week and things like that. So one of the biggest portions of this pro process for me, like, is... Um, well... How do, where do I start? I wrote down here, remembering why I started We're on the Street. And I've been a couple of things have come up for me. I've mentioned I think already on the on this video journal where I'm becoming known as a podcaster more than a musician and that's not okay with me. It's not my interest totally. Like my the whole point in a lot of ways is to help 
bring awareness to my projects as well as the scene. You know, it's like a double whammy in a way. And it got me thinking about why I do work on the street and and um, in, in, and alongside of that, a parallel idea of that is the reason I started We're on the Street. So it's, it's kind of muddy in a way, but the reason I started We're on the Street as well is because I know because of my situation with having to work a date, full-time day job, having my kids, yeah, as much as I want and want to have them, um, and various things like that prevents me from doing everything I want to do in my artistic and musical world. So I was like, well, how can I do things here and still be moving forward with my artistic journey? And that's why I started the podcast. Um, so it's like, essentially, um, I had a guest over as well, and we were talking about um, the podcast and this is the fact that I launch for a month and I typically maybe have, you know, the typical amount of shows I play is like one show a month. So in some ways I'm playing five shows a month because each podcast is a show for me and I do a musical performance once a month. Um, unfortunately it doesn't quite satisfy me the way, like if I was actually playing out five times would be more satisfying than doing four podcasts and one show. I believe, um, I do enjoy the podcast, but it got me thinking, it got me reevaluating how I want to approach the podcast because along with that, so keep that in mind, like what's going on, like I'm getting known to be a podcaster more than a musician and that's not okay with me. Um, and it's something that I internally have to deal with because where I've had this conversation a few times and it's like you have, playing the show is the icing on the cake kind of ideas, the fun part of it. And there's all this other work and you have to be okay with sitting in your room and recording your music or doing all this other work and it's actual work even though nobody else will ever see that work you're still a musician you're still an artist you're still that thing and it's you know when you go out and play the show then finally other people can see you being that thing and that for me the validation in that world even even if people don't show up to the show at least knowing that i did it makes me feel validated that I can continue doing this process. This is, is that, that's, but, and I sometimes don't let myself validate the fact that I'm in here creating in here when nobody sees it. And I personally feel like I have to get over that and go, okay, it's fine. I'm still an artist, even if nobody else knows it in a way if that makes sense. Cause I'm doing, I'm still doing. So that's the, that's the main point of it all. It's like, if you want to call yourself something, you have to be doing that thing. And that's, I ran into that like a basically two and a half years ago when I started this whole process of the video journals and things, maybe three years ago, I really, with some of my art, just other things, I just wanted to really be doing it. So, and this, that leads perfectly into the, what else I wanted to tell you about, because I realized over the last two and a half years or so, basically, I'll just use the timeline of the video journal because it works out pretty good. When I started the video journal in, in January of 2014, I really ramped up what um, my energy toward trying to create with the means I had um, my musical and artistic career and, and keep going. And I realized that, um, I'm gonna turn the fan on, it's hot. I'm back. Um, I realized that uh, I I got burnt out. Basically, the 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 short of the answer, the short story to that whole thing is I I burnt myself out. And about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago now, I really hit the wall hard. Um, I was just trying to do way too much, and I got burnt out. And I kind of scaled back a little bit at that time. And, but we still had a couple of shows. We had Brody Nation on the book still, and, and I think maybe that was even before we played the Bindlestick show. Yeah, it was right before right before the Bindlestick show. I just was getting really burned. But I had those shows on the books. I had the, my commitment I wanted to keep to the podcast and those things. So I had to keep moving forward, even though I just kind of really wanted to stop. But at the same time, I was in denial about my burnout as well. I didn't... I was like, fuck you. I just... I was frustrated that I was working so hard and I didn't feel I necessarily had as much to show for it that I wanted to show for it. And so it just, my anxiety and depression was going off the chart. There was just lots of things going on and it got to basically about a couple of weeks ago before part of the reason why I missed last week's pod, 
video journal was it got to a point where I just had to stop. I had to stop and just stop. And so what I did, I called A-Rock and I was like, it, I need to take a break from the band. So I haven't, we haven't had band practice in like two weeks. Um, I still had commitments to recording podcasts. However, I just, I've been sleeping as much as I can. I've been getting as much rest as I can. And it's been helping a lot. Um, Cause I realized, one of the things I realized was it will do me no good like with all the goals and dreams and and hustle and all these ideas I personally have for what I want to do with my life, if I'm completely burnt out and getting sick because of it, and you know basically anxiety and depression is a form of sickness, um, an illness that if I'm allowing myself to push myself so far that I'm it's getting in the way of the things that I want to create, which it's was starting to really do. It was really getting frustrating and hard to deal with that. It does me no good. It does me no good to be that burnout and that frustrated. So I made a switch in my mind and I said, okay, it's time for me to rest. And when I, as I started resting, I feel so much better now than I did a couple of weeks ago, which I'm super thankful for. And what I realized was that, um, in, well, there's just a lot to talk about, but um, I realized in some ways, e this this process started way back, like about six, seven years ago now, when I actually got got divorced, because at that time I may I was, you know, trying to figure out how to start making money because I was a stay at home parent, I didn't have any money, so the divorce happened. I needed to find out how to get money, so I was starting to make money. I kept my music going, but. It was just kind of there, you know, doing it. I didn't, a couple years after the divorce, I really started to focus in on the music, but I never, I never gave myself an opportunity to just process and relax and, and, and kind of like get that out of my system in a way. And, um, cause you, you know, it takes a while when you're hurting in that kind of pain, it definitely takes a while for it to all go away, but I never... I just never gave my, I never, I hadn't stopped basically. I haven't stopped for the last like six years of just trying to keep hustling, be present to my kids, have, make money, do things for myself, create for myself. And you know, I don't watch TV. I watch movies is what I do. That's, that's my main time consuming outlet is, is movies. I'll watch a movie here and there, but it's not like a nightly thing. It's once every couple of weeks I watch an, a movie. That's what I do more than anything else in terms of like entertainment for myself when I'm not with my kids and when I'm not working on my own projects. But, um, so I just, I'm just constantly going and constantly, and it definitely, bottom line, it definitely caught up to me this last little span of time. So I've scaled back greatly. So which then leads me to the future of the podcast and what my plan is for the podcast. So like you heard me say already is I'm kind of dis not disappointed is not the right word. I love what the po the what the podcast has created for me. I mean, every time I go out to a show now, I feel like there is um, some benefit, I guess you could say, to being out there talking to people because not only do I have the podcast but the band because I've always I've always always had a hard time with trying to to solicit and promote my band while I'm out. Because it's like everybody's in a band and everybody wants everybody to, to check out their band. But the podcast thing is a slightly different. It's a, a, it's different than what most people are doing. And it's more about learning the their story. It's saying, tell me about your band, you know, instead of me going, hey, here's my band. Come see me play some. So it's like it, it makes it much easier to network and talk. And then, you know, the goal is that people will then learn about my music as well. So there's that kind of thing. So anyways, the the future of the podcast and what I'm hoping, what I'm going to start doing with it is I'm, I, want, I was thinking like, I don't, it's taking up too much time. So that was the other, so that's part of it. It's taking up too much of my time because I'd really, the bottom line of everything artistically that I'm doing, my favorite, my passion is fully in music. That's where I want to spend my time and energy. I want to be playing music, creating music, writing music, you know, that's where I want to spend the bulk of my artistic and creative energy. And I haven't been able to do it as much as I want to, and especially as much as I want to, if I want to have any success with it. Um, I do as it's, yeah, it's a, 
crazy thing. Because basically, what I'm, I mean, it's so weird. There's, it's, you want to have balance in your life, right? You want to find balance. But at the same time, because of the structure of the way our society works, the way our Western world, the United States, works with success in anything, and one of the things that we, how we define success is making money off something. And I definitely, without question, want to make money off my art and music and things like that. So um, that's one of the pieces I, I put into my personal definition of success. There's a lot more. Obviously, I'm not making any money off of anything I do artistically, and I yet I still feel successful. I now have 93 podcasts made. You know, that's I feel fucking awesome about that. Um, that I've continued that almost two years of doing this podcast. You know, I've created music with my band. I've played awesome shows and done a lot with my band. There's a lot of successful things that have happened in that. The piece, the money piece has not yet been a part of that success equation. I'm hoping to get to the money piece and figure out how to do that. But um, but what I'm realizing is to create that success, I'm not spending nearly enough time on the thing that I'm most passionate about, which is my music. So I'm thinking, like, how can I reduce the amount of time the podcast takes and spend more time with the music? Because I, I believe the podcast... That you could look at it as two separate entities, and and, I, and you could look at it as like, well, I'm just dividing my time too much. You know, I'm trying to do two things instead of one thing. And the more focus you can get on one thing, I believe, the more successful you will be. The more divided you are, the less successful you will be. I'm, I, admittedly, way too divided. I mean, it's partly I feel like the just the nature of where I'm at in life. I have the day job, kids. You know, I'm, there's just things I wanted, I have to do. And that divides my time. So the amount of time I have to devote to creative outlets is pretty small in comparison. So what I've decided, getting to the point, <laughs> is with the podcast, how I was thinking about how I can reduce the amount of time it takes. And originally I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just reduce it down to twice a month or something. And I was even thinking of going down to once a month because I was feeling, and this was in the time when I was feeling overwhelmed. And what I really strive, I really try hard not to swing the pendulum too far. And what I mean by that is if I'm overwhelmed and the pendulum's all the way over here, I don't just whack it over here and go, I'm not doing anything at all. And I, I don't do that. I try to bring it to center. My goal is to bring it to center and be, find that balance in life and everything. So maybe I'll push it a little bit farther over here and get rid of some things and figure out what's feeling right and not. Because I know for me internally as, as a... Um, kind of the way I am as a creative person, I can't go too long with doing nothing. Otherwise, I just start getting depressed, especially if I'm working a day job and doing nothing because then I'm just like, I'm all I'm doing is spending my time for somebody else's dream. I'm doing nothing for my own dream and I just can't, I do not work that way. It just does not work for me. I need to find ways to express my own desires and dreams through my art and music. So I try not to swing the pendulum too far. So I was thinking... At the time, I was like, maybe go down to once a month for a while or something like that. But then I was thinking, well, what I've come to the conclusion of is basically I want to keep it a weekly process, but I'm going to get rid of any custom intros and outros. It'll be all, the only custom part of the whole podcast will be the conversation itself. The intros and outros are going to be much shorter and they're just going to be like a stock one that I create and I just stick it together so there's less. So what I'm going to do from now on, as I've told you in the past, I do batch recording. So I do like eight in a weekend and that lasts me through two months. And so in that weekend, I'm going to also produce them all and then I will publish them all in that very close to that, so maybe within a week. So for the next two months, and I'll have them on scheduled posts, so they'll automatically schedule out in two months' time, and I won't have to think about anything of the podcast for two whole months, and then I'll batch another round of recordings and do it, that process over again. So that's kind of where the solution that I've come up with. So it's not starting this coming up week, but the week after is where I will have those It'll sound. It'll start sounding different, and I'll be talking about this more as well. So that's that's pretty much caught you up. There's one other idea I wrote down that really resonated with me as I was thinking. If you've seen, okay, before we get even farther, 
August 20th at the substation, 5.30, the 100th recording party of the podcast. Please come out. I'd love to see you there. Um, I'll, of course, I'll post the link to the event page in the description of this video. So link it up. Go, you know, say you're coming or whatever, but you can find out all the information, all the bands. So DJ Boo's opening it up. Um, Tobias the Owl's going to be on it. Honey Mustard's going to be on it. The Zim and A Rock is going to be on it. Those three are all going to be acoustic playing in the round. We have Crystal Desert, great rock band from Seattle, going to close out the show. We have Katie Kirkchi and Kari Nicole Taylor showing art along with a few other local artists that the substation brought on. We have the Strive, we have Silas Stokes of the Strive Creative Coalition going to help with some audio support, just capturing the actual podcast. It's going to be casual, relaxed. In this this whole last few weeks of just crazy life that I've been going on, um, one of the things that kind of got sacrificed was my intentions to do more with the environment of the substation. I wanted to do, I had all these grand visions of like painting a mural that would hang in the back of the stage and doing stuff in the foyer area, like a, a big poster that everybody signed and, and, and like doing this custom merch table. So it was like unique and different and, and, and having, you know, spotlighting the bands and, and showing off the bands more and stuff. None of that's going to happen. It's all bare bones, just the substation and us on stage and just chill. So it's really up to you to bring your bodies into this place and create and be a part of it um, because otherwise it'll just be us on stage talking to ourselves, which I'm fine with because it's essentially going to be a published podcast down the line. Anyway, it'll be about a month after the recording that it actually gets published. So that brought you up to speed with what's going on with the World on the Street 100th episode or version recording party at the substation August 20th. So I guess it's about 25 minutes that I get to actually record um, straight. <laughs> I let this one, I'm letting this one go long. Um, so I'm going to have to do some editing in the computer after I get done recording all of it. Um, the last thing that I'll talk about is there's this analogy. So you've seen. If you're my friends and if you've seen the Zim, I don't know, my pages on social network, I uh, I go to the park and hit baseballs, right? And there's this analogy I've recognized that when I'm hitting the baseball, it's like you know when you hit the sweet spot and you know when you're off and you know that you there's a, a place that you're just if you make a little adjustment, minor adjustment and hit it in the right spot, Eventually, you'll hit it in that perfect spot that it just launches. Just You just get it, right? And that's essentially what I'm feeling about my artistic and music career is I'm still making adjustments. I feel like I have that potential. The potential energy, the potential idea, the potential to, to just break out and be something, find that success that I'm looking for is, is there. It's there in my core and I have the fire and I have the drive and I have the desire to keep working toward it. Because even though, um, even though, like I mentioned, you know, I was feeling burnt out and, um, and, and, um, well, all that kind of stuff that was going on, it hasn't wavered my desire. And, and well, what I wanted to say was, you know, finding balance, you want to find balance. But at the same time, you find balance, and I believe that the person that will become successful is the person that's aware of where the balance point is, but has enough crazy in them to keep keep testing the outer limits of your balance. Go like, what more? What more can I do? What more can I do? It's like this is the balance point, but let me let me try for a while, just doing a little bit more, like staying up a little later, working on my projects a little more, getting up a little early, working on my projects a little more. Keep hustling, keep creating, keep doing something, and then and being self aware enough and going, okay, I'm doing too much now. Let's reel back a little bit. Let's get a little rest, but still keep working, still keep working. It's like it does no good to go completely crazy, which is basically where I went, completely crazy, and then go ah and have a meltdown and can't do anything. But if, you, if you're if you aware of where your balance point is and keep testing and keep pushing and keep being just a little bit essentially crazy and neurotic and, and just going for it, it's kind of where you have to be, in my opinion, to be truly successful in the things that you want. So you just got to keep working on it. And so those ideas are where I'm at right now. I just, I just feel it. I just 
I, I have no idea why I'm so crazy about and, and passionate about this music stuff. And I want to do something with it. And I want to create and want to make an impact for myself. You know, it's interesting to think about all that stuff. So, well, anyways, thanks for joining. This is the Video Journal episode 117. Let me know what you think. I'd love to talk with you. Let me know what you think about the podcast, how it's been going for you. Um, and, and of course, I really want to know your jam, what you've been listening to, what song came up. If you, even if you, if it's your own music, tell me about it. If it's some friend of yours, if it's something you discovered randomly, let me know. I want to check it out and see if it inspires me as well. I check out all of them. And I hope you check out what I told you about. But also, um, one last thing. Can't quite remember. Oh yeah, subscribe to this YouTube page. I'm trying to build this YouTube page up. Subscribe to the page. I'd love your support that way. So let's do this. All right, thanks. I'll catch you next week. Peace.